Hey, how's it going everybody? Welcome back to another Projectionist Vlog. My name is Eve. Thank you very much for tuning in. And today is June 14th, 2020. And 10 years ago today, um, I was there at my theater in New Rochelle, Regal New Rock City 18 and IMAX, for the big digital rollout. In the summer of 2010, uh, pretty much every major movie theater in America converted to digital. Um, and by the end of the summer, or I guess maybe early September, I'm assuming, I don't know off the top of my head, I'm assuming it was about maybe 85% of the theaters or 90% of the theaters in the world uh, became digital. There were still some 35s that were still going, but I believe it was up until 2015 that it was like on this global scale that uh, digital ultimately took over. Um, so yeah, I was there for that 10 years ago today. Um, and it was weird. It was sad. It was, um, you know, I've always heard about it going digital, dating back to like 2004. I was told by some people, they're like, yeah, digital's coming. It's going to come. Get ready. Get ready. Do this. Do that. You know, there's no room in this industry anymore. You know, there's no more room for growth. Um, and they were right. Digital came. And I remember it was a Monday. And by the way, the last movies that our theater received, because how it worked was, each week it was um, a set of theaters that were, you know, listed. They were scheduled to go digital. So we went digital June fourteenth. So the last movie, to, last two movies that we received on thirty five millimeter film, uh, which was uh, June eleventh, you know, Friday, were the Karate Kid remake, you know, with uh, Jaden Smith and Jackie Chan. And the eight-team uh, movie adaptation from the TV show. So those were the last two 35 millimeter movies that we received. And then that Monday, each day, um, four projectors out, four projectors in. Um, so it was crazy. And I remember seeing it. Uh, you had um, a team of uh, technicians, a team of installers... Um, you, you had maybe a couple engineers and, you know, of course the district manager was there overseeing everything and the general manager and it took pretty much all week. And we, we had a union booth, but we worked with those guys. Um, you know, the union guys, I worked very well with them. They're great guys. Uh, even though I was in union, but by the time 75% of the booth went digital, the union guys, they didn't have to show up anymore. Um, but yeah, it was crazy. Uh, the IMAX was still filmed, though. It was filmed for se several more months, and that ultimately went digital in 2011, February of 2011. So I was pretty good up until then. But, uh, yeah, I remember um, when they were installing those projectors, I remember I remember me and a couple other projectionists, we, like, initialed our names on, on uh, some of the doors of the projector heads, like, on the insides. We, you know, I put my initial and the date and all that. Um, so if anybody, you know, sees a projector head, you know, YL on it, you know, that, that's me. Um, but I remember breaking down all these 35 millimeter prints, like really fast and stuff. And, uh, and then that was it. We went digital. Um, but I didn't start getting involved with it until the IMAX went digital. And then I had to learn like how to, how to, how to ingest movies and how to, um, you know, allocate films, build SPLs, uh, all that stuff. Um, changing the, the bulb was essentially the same thing. It was slightly different, uh, but I took it over. Um, but you know what? Uh, now I'm kind of 50-50 with the digital, but I'm happy that we're living in a world where we can do film and digital. I just wish there was a little more film. Um, but back then I was like really bitter towards it. And the reason why is because, uh, when we went digital, um, you know, I was pretty much demoted to a floor manager. Um, I, uh, unfortunately my insurance got cut off. Uh, my hours were reduced to part time. I was no longer full time. And, you know, I was really bitter towards it because all these managers that I was working with, they they built this whole thing up like it was this great, wonderful thing. And 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 look, digital has its pros and cons, just like thirty five millimeter has its pros and cons. But you know, in terms of of uh, you know uh, giving jobs, it didn't really give many jobs. It pretty much took jobs away. The whole 
pretty much the whole thing about digitals. Um, yeah, the picture is kind of crisp and clear, but it's not a 35 millimeter print. And, you know, digital uh, decreases the amount of people that you need upstairs. You don't need anybody up there. Uh, you don't have to worry about brain wraps. But, but, you know, there are server problems with those digital projectors. And projectors crash. And, you know, uh, sometimes there's input issues and stuff like that. Um, but, yeah, you know, it, it pretty much was designed to get rid of the projectionist. And I remember when I was running the IMAX in the fall of 2010... Uh, they somehow um, promoted an usher to go upstairs and to start all the movies and like that was like a test um, and they, they were doing it for a few weeks until one of the ushers got smart and was like oh I want to get paid more money for this um, but yeah you know so I was overseeing all the digitals in the beginning of 2011 uh, but I learned a lot from it I learned how to how to how to, how to kind of it was kind of like IT work um, but it was, you know, it's good knowledge to have, uh, but then eventually, um, the projectors became automated, um, <laughs> which sucked, but before, right before they became automated, I remember they had me, um, like you were, you were given two days of the week to kind of do booth work, which was build the SPLs, ingest the content and, you know, any, any bulb or bulb changing or maintenance and stuff like that. Um, but I remember at one point they were like, oh, you have to go sit at customer service and start the movies from, from um, you know, the, the computer downstairs. And you'd log in to each projector and you'd start it while you're handling customer service at the same time. And guess what? My paycheck did not increase. Uh, and a lot of movie theaters did this to a lot of managers. Uh, some of them complained and quit. Some of them didn't complain. Um, I guess, you know, I don't know. Uh, but I remember that. And then the projectors went digital and it, like that really sucked. You know, I was dealing, you know, uh, floor management like crazy, especially in an 18 screen theater uh, where we get like really busy movies. It was really bad. So I did not enjoy the digital. Uh, but luckily, during my time in the post-digital regal world, uh, I was there for IMAX movies that we got by Christopher Nolan. You know, we were one of the few th handful of theaters in the world running 70 millimeter IMAX films and, and stuff. Um, but yeah, you know, now here I am. I work at the Jacob Burns uh, Theater, and we have digital. We're mostly digital, but we run archival 35 and some first run 35 millimeter films, and we just do other stuff. Uh, but I'm working as a projectionist. I'm getting paid as a projectionist, like when I'm up there. Unfortunately, right now I'm furloughed due to the COVID uh, 19 uh, pandemic. But uh, when I was there, I was doing strictly booth work and getting paid, and I was salary, and I was like, wow, this is awesome. Um, you know, I was able to do both. And, and and I felt a little better about digital, but when it first came, it was not the coolest thing in the world. <laughs> um, and I remember like when digital first came out, I remember uh, it was Sony, like some of the, the Sony projectors. There was like two different models, but we had the first model. Uh, there might've been a few others, but we had the very first model. And I remember um, uh, the, the image being projected. I forgot the first movie we showed. Uh, it was with Gerard Butler and uh, Catherine Heigl. It was in sometime in 2009. We in theater two at New Rock. We showed this movie, and it was all green. Uh, I don't know. It just it was green. Uh, you know, I guess there's something in the projector that that helped emit this color. It was weird. Uh, but then we got more Sony projectors, which were better looking. You know, but I guess uh, digital has improved over the years. But you know, because of digital. Uh, unfortunately, you know, there's plenty of articles about it. You can look it up. The presentation in a lot of mainstream, you know, chain theaters has decreased big time. You know, theater chains now, the masking, uh, they don't fix the masking. They just leave it out. You know, so, you know, they'll show a movie flat in scope, um, you know, with the masking curtains out and up. Uh, so, <laughs> which is not cool presentation. Um Another thing is you'll have projectors that are 3D capable, but sometimes they'll show 2D movies in there. 
Uh, and then they'll sometimes show 3D in there. But when they show the 2D movie, the polarizer is left down. Nobody changes. It, no, nobody moves it up. The polarizer is what allows the, the, the you know, for the the 3D image. But if the polarizer is down for a 2D movie, the image is going to be really dark. Um, so yeah, it's just it, it is what it is. And movies have been report reportedly have been starting by themselves, and masking doesn't change if the masking does work. Uh, as I know, I mentioned before, many theaters uh, left the masking open on the side, so don't have to worry about it moving. Um, yeah, and and that's it. You know, some theaters I heard, I heard it was AMC that the uh, all the uh, setting up the movies like the SPLs and 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 allocations. It's all done at a home office. Nobody on on site actually does it. I don't know, um, but I think theater <laughs> theaters like when they reopen. I think they need somebody up there to uh, to really oversee this stuff, to be the main digital person and have them take care of everything in the booth. Because just because it's digital doesn't mean it's 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 easy. You know, it's not. Um, it, it, it's enough of the cutting corners and and stuff like that. You know, I, I mean, you know, you guys want to give good presentation, you should do it. And there's a lot of art houses now that are becoming very well known and very big because not only do they show digital uh but they show obscured independent films digitally and they have projectionists that really work take care of these projectors just like i do and they also show 35 millimeter film prints you know both new and archival you know it's really important now you know um we have to kind of preserve the magic of movies and just instead of just leaving it as this automated robotic setup nightmare it's, it's really something but uh, I just wanted to show everybody, you know, a change. It's here. There we go. All right. So I mentioned A Team before. So I have 35 millimeter trailers for A Team. There you go. That's version one. All right. It's 10th anniversary just passed. It's on my Instagram. You can follow me there. See more images. There we go. All right. So now that it's digital, you have this trailer. But in a digital form, it comes like this on a thumb drive. This is just for some random trailer. Um, but this is how they ship them, or they ship them on a on a on a on a on a, on a, a drive, like a big drive, um, you know, with a, a sled, and you just put it in the port and you ingest. But there you go, you have this in in the thumb drive. It's pretty something, huh? So uh, these these are more valuable, obviously. But uh, we get these at the theaters, and then we just reformat them to use for our other other means. Um, all right, so I hope you enjoyed. Please let me know what you think in the comment section. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. And like I said, please follow me on Instagram. Uh, I am the 80s Die Hard Studios on Instagram. And thanks again for watching. This is an 80s Die Hard production. Later. Bye.